Hello everyone in CardioMinds channel and we are still in the topic of guidelines of cardiovascular disease prevention and today we are speaking about the risk stratification in apparently healthy population. We remember this diagram which we have spoken about in the preamble. We mentioned that the prevention goals are for all types of population, whether they are apparently healthy, with established cardiovascular disease, or they have a specific risk condition. We have spoken in two videos about risk modifiers and the comorbidities and how they may influence the cardiovascular risk. Today we are starting the cardiovascular risk estimation, which is of course followed by the informed discussion with the patient. Our target in the risk stratification is to identify the patients who will benefit most from cardiovascular risk factor treatment and mostly we are speaking about the high risk group and very high risk group. We are going to start today with the apparently healthy people. What do we mean by this term? We mean those without established cardiovascular disease, without diabetes, without CKD, and without familial hypercholesterolemia. In this guideline, the cardiovascular morbidity, which includes non-fatal events like non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, is combined with the cardiovascular mortality, which includes the fatal events, which is more accurate to reflect the total burden of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. That's why the SCORE2 algorithm published this year in the Guidelines of Cardiovascular Prevention estimates the individual's 10-year risk of fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events in apparently healthy people aged between 40 to 69 years with risk factors either untreated or stabilized for several years. So it is totally different from the SCORE algorithm in 2016 guidelines which estimates only the 10-year risk of fatal events. The challenge is elderly populations as the traditional risk models don't consider the competing risk of non-cardiovascular mortality as here. The instance of non-cardiovascular disease may increase with the advancing age, so they may overestimate the actual 10-year risk of cardiovascular disease and so overestimate the potential benefit of treatment in this age category. That's why there is a specific subtype of SCORE2 algorithm called SCORE2OB, standing for older person, which estimates both the 5-year and 10-year risk of fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events adjusted for the competing risk in the apparently healthy people more than or equal 70 year old. So don't forget that SCORE2 algorithm don't apply to persons with established cardiovascular disease, diabetes, familial hyperlipidemia, CKD, other genetic or rare lipid or blood pressure disorders and also they don't apply to pregnant females. Pay also attention that risk estimate need to be adjusted upwards as the person approach the next age category. So this risk estimation process is a dynamic process that we need to reclassify the risk again as the patient advance and he may move to the next age category. So there is a class 1 indication that in apparently healthy people less than 70 years, the estimation of 10 year fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular risk using SCORE2 algorithm is recommended and in the elderly population more than or equal 70 years, the score 2 OB is recommended. So what are the parameters that I need to know in order to estimate the risk using the score 2 algorithms? I need to know the country risk category, gender, age, smoking status, systolic blood pressure, and non-HDL cholesterol. The first thing is the country risk category. We remember this map in which the SCORE2 and SCORE2OB are calibrated to four clusters of countries according to the National Cardiovascular Mortality Rates published by the WHO. So the countries are divided to being low risk, moderate risk, high risk, or very high risk. Number two, we know the gender of the patient, whether it is male or female. Then the age of the patient, which is a major driver of cardiovascular risk. If you are speaking about a patient less than 50 or between 50 and 69, so we use the SCORE2 algorithm. And if you are speaking about a patient more than or equal 70 years, we use the SCORE2OB algorithm. Lifelong risk factor treatment, of course, is much beneficial in younger population because speaking about a longer life to live and so the risk threshold to consider treatment usually lower for younger population in order to prolong the lifetime benefit.
Number four, we check the smoking status, whether smoker versus non-smoker. And then the systolic blood pressure is important to check. And then the non-HDL cholesterol, which equal total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol. Then we are going to have a chart like this. You need to check that you have selected the appropriate chart according to the risk category of the country. Here in most of the Middle Eastern countries, we are going to select the very high cardiovascular risk. Then we are going to check the age of the patient, which divides the chart into score 2 algorithm and score 2 OB algorithm. I know the gender of the patient and the smoking status, so I'm going to have four columns here. Then I know the systolic blood pressure and just pay attention that there is a separate column systolic blood pressure for the score 2 algorithm and another column for the score 2 OB algorithm. And then I'm going to check the non-HDL cholesterol. So let's give an example. I'm having a patient who is a male, he's a smoker, 57 year old, systolic blood pressure is 150 millimeter mercury and non-HDL cholesterol is 170 milligram per deciliter. So we know that he is male and smoker, so I have chosen this column. Then he is 57 year old, so I am in the score 2 algorithm and in this age category between 55 to 59. His systolic blood pressure is 150, so I can draw a line from this blood pressure range. Then the non-HDL cholesterol 170, so I would draw a vertical line from the value of the non-HDL cholesterol between 150 to 200. So the risk estimate is in this circle, which is 23, and it represents a 10-year risk of fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events in this patient. And as we can see, the circle here has a color of red, so we are speaking about a very high risk of cardiovascular events. And in this graph, we can see that there are three age groups and three risk categories represented in three different colors. And as the age increase, the cutoff point of each risk category increase. So the cutoff point is different for the three age groups. Then the second step that I need to translate the cardiovascular risk, which I calculated into treatment thresholds. I should emphasize that there is no risk threshold universally applicable. And so the intensity of treatment should increase with the increasing cardiovascular risk. And so we need to mention that the prevention goals are recommended for all by stopping smoking, advice for lifestyle recommendations regarding diet and exercise, and target systolic blood pressure less than 160 millimeter mercury in general. But of course, we are going to reach lower targets when we are speaking about the treatment interventions. We mentioned that the risk categories are divided into three categories, into low to moderate, high cardiovascular risk, or very high cardiovascular risk risk and as we mentioned the age as a major driver of cardiovascular risk the cutoff points for the risk categories are numerically different in order to avoid under treatment in the young and over treatment in older persons and in all age group i should consider the presence of risk modifiers or not lifetime cardiovascular risk comorbidities frailty treatment benefits and patient preference. So there is a class 1 indication. The patient with high or very high cardiovascular risk we should follow a stepwise treatment intensification approach for intensive risk factor treatment but putting into consideration the cardiovascular risk, treatment benefit of risk factors, risk modifiers, comorbidities and patient preferences. And there is a class 2A that in apparently healthy people in general, after estimation of the 10-year risk of fatal and non-fatal risk, I should pay attention to the lifetime risk, treatment benefit, risk modifiers, frailty, polypharmacy, and patient preferences. If the patient has an estimated very high cardiovascular risk, which is more than or equal 7.5% in the age less than 50, more than or equal 10% in the age of 50 to 69 years, and more than or equal 15% in the age of 70 or more years. So here the risk relates to a high lifetime risk, and so the treatment of risk factors is recommended. And there is a class 1 recommendation that a patient with very high cardiovascular risk, treatment of risk factors is recommended in the apparently 
healthy population. If the estimated risk is high according to the age category, so here the treatment of risk factor should be considered. And so there is a class 2A that in patients with high cardiovascular risk, treatment of factors should be considered in apparently healthy people, taking into consideration the cardiovascular risk modifiers, lifetime risk, treatment benefit and patient preference into my account. But if the estimated risk is low to moderate, so here this person is not candidate for risk factor treatment unless one or more risk factor may increase the risk of the cardiovascular disease. Kindly note that in the apparently healthy people more than or equal 70 years, the estimated 10-year cardiovascular risk exceeds the conventional risk factor because the gradient of the relationship between the classical risk factors and the cardiovascular risk attenuates with age and also the lifetime benefit of treatment as regarding the gain free of cardiovascular disease is lower in older people and so in this age category the cardiovascular risk thresholds are higher than in younger persons so we are late to start the treatment in comparison to younger persons in the apparently healthy people less than 50 years the 10-year risk of cardiovascular disease on the average is low even in the presence of high risk factors level but the lifetime risk is very high in this case and so we should pay attention that the lifetime benefit perspective may be more useful in the risk communication with younger people plus also speaking about the risk of devastating cardiovascular events in the short to intermediate term level so we should pay attention in the younger person to the 10-year risk and also to the lifetime risk which be, may be more accurate to estimate the risk of future events what about the apparently healthy people less than 40 years the cardiovascular risk prediction and the lifetime benefit of risk factor treatment are usually inaccurate at this very young age and so the lipid lowering and blood pressure lowering drug treatment are not usually considered in this age category except if the patient is having markedly elevated risk from this condition like those with familiar hyperlipidemia or a specific blood pressure disorder a healthy lifestyle should be advised regardless the age of the patient and so it is more relevant for the very young population in the mendelian randomization studies show that relatively small change in ldl cholesterol or systolic blood pressure maintained throughout life have a large implication on the cardiovascular risk over the person's lifespan so we all know that it is class 3 to have systematic cardiovascular risk assessment in men less than 40 years or women less than 50 years with no known cardiovascular risk factor but this doesn't prevent me to advise this person to have a healthy lifestyle and also to treat markedly elevated risk factors there are other terminologies that we should be familiar with especially in the apparently healthy people we know the relative risk which is another way to explain to the patient the increasing cardiovascular risk due to presence of certain risk factors in comparison to those without for example his risk because he is a smoker in comparison to non-smoker or his risk because he is hypertensive in comparison to non-hypertensive but should take care that the direct translation of relative risk to treatment decision is not recommended as the absolute risk is still the superior for starting treatment and absolute risk reduction is better understood by most of the patients than relative risk reduction because when I speak to the patient that you have a risk of developing cardiovascular events by for example 20 percent and when you have risk factor treatment this risk can be dropped to 15 percent so this be, may be more understandable to the patient the risk age of a person with several risk factor equals the age of a person of the same sex with the same level of risk but with low level of risk factors and is considered an easy method to explain to the patient the likely reduction in his life expectancy if preventive measures are not adopted so risk age may be used in order to simplify to the patient the short in life expectancy caused by these risk factors and the famous terminology lifetime cardiovascular risk which can identify high risk individuals both in the short and long term and it can be calculated using a calculator available in the ASC cardiovascular risk calculation app and usually it is used in the younger 
persons who may have low 10 year risk but if you estimate their lifetime cardiovascular risk it may accurately reflect his long term risk of cardiovascular disease and from it we can calculate the lifetime benefit which is a similar approach using the lifetime perspective in order to calculate the lifetime benefit of preventive interventions and it can be expressed as gaining cardiovascular free life in years and so it is easier to communicate to the patient and to support the shared decision making process we can find risk scores available on mobile application and also some links mentioned in the description of the video that can calculate the 10 year cardiovascular risk or the lifetime risk in those with previous cardiovascular disease with type 2 diabetes or apparently healthy population and in the apparently healthy population we can find the two types of algorithm score 2 and score 2 OB after the risk estimation process there should be an informed discussion with the patient about the cardiovascular risk and treatment benefits which should be tailored to his needs and this is class 1 recommendation so today we have spoken about the apparently healthy people we spoke about the prevention goals for all and the 10 year risk that should be estimated considering risk modifiers lifetime risk especially in the younger treatment benefits and patients preference and then followed by step two which is intensified prevention and treatment goal based on these factors to reach the ultimate prevention goals so our take home message today is that the risk stratification is a comprehensive process that should take into account multiple factors not only the number which I calculate in order to reach an accurate risk estimate that identifies the highest risk groups who will benefit of course from the preventive measures. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait in the next video for the risk stratification in patients with established cardiovascular disease.